Hey there, and welcome back to another Stranger Things video. And recently, we saw the release of the second volume of the fourth season of Stranger Things, and it was a lot. A lot of big plot points, some key deaths, most notably Eddie, and briefly Max, the return of Eleven's powers and her first proper clash with One since he became Vecna, and of course, the creation of a massive gateway that links the Upside Down to the real world of Hawkins. And I'm sure that in the wake of this, there's been a ton of theories and analysis about the various different potential ways that Season 5 could play out, or about the secret elements of the backstories of various different characters, which relationships are going to die, which relationships will flourish, all that kind of stuff. It's a decently popular franchise after all, and this season's really reinvigorated people's interest. And because of that, there's really so many different things I could say in this video, so many different avenues to take. But today I think I want to go down the rabbit hole a little bit and talk about the character of Max and her future in the show. After all, she very much felt like one of the big stars of the show this season, and was one of the driving forces of the narrative. And this came after what was a pretty lesser role, all things considered, during Season 3, where her primary storyline was to help bring Elle out of her shell and give her a meaningful relationship with a character that isn't Hopper or Mike. A peer that's her own age for her to bounce off of and help her connect to the real world, grow past what's happened to her, and try to let her be a normal teenager. Or, as normal as you can be when you're raised as a lab rat with psionic powers. And they also sort of gave her a weirdly closer relationship with her stepbrother Billy. I mean, not that they interact much, but she seems to care about him a lot more now that he's being possessed by the Mind Flayer and is in danger. Like, yeah, I know she should care to a certain point, but I feel like it was not to that level. I recently rewatched season two, and I get that his dad was abusive, but Billy is nuts. Fully nuts. But it seems like the Duff has decided that, yeah, it was a little out of character. So when they made her arc for season four, it became that she was feeling guilty, that she'd always wished for something awful to happen to him, for him to die or suffer. And then when it happens, she begins to blame herself. And so this is what really drives her story during the fourth season. Those feelings of guilt and shame, which push her to isolate herself from her friend group and break up with Lucas. She starts to see the school counsellor and her grades start to slip. Her stepdad walks out on the family, no big loss there. And her and her mother have to move into a trailer park where her mum picks up a drinking problem and everything goes to shit. She then starts to have some very severe mental health issues of her own, which culminate in her witnessing the murder of Chrissy Cunningham, and then finding herself being targeted by a psychotic monster of a man who's able to infiltrate the minds of people and mutilate their bodies remotely. He's very strong, he's very dangerous, and he specifically wants her dead. So yeah, there's not really much going right for her life at that point in the story. It's one of the bleaker character arcs for season 4. And then all of this culminates in Volume 2, with Max offering herself up as bait to distract Vecna, whilst the others try to kill him. And this results in her bones getting snapped, her eyes nearly getting gouged out, and eventually she just straight up dies in Lucas's arms as a result of the trauma. Not willing to accept her friend's death, Al manages to use her powers to restart her heart, but she remains in a coma with no brain activity. So yeah, brain dead, but probably not for long. I doubt this show would leave her in a coma forever with no hope of waking up. Otherwise, I think they would have just killed her off, if I'm being honest. Because it would be a very bleak sort of storyline. And whilst there have been bleak storylines in abundance since the release of Stranger Things Season 1, I think this would go a step beyond that. Having one of the main characters linger on for years, unable to move, think, or communicate, just a husk, that's no fun. At this stage, I want my happy Return of the Jedi ending. It's a show about the 80s. Let's not have a depressing end. There's already so much depressing shit on TV these days. The time for that kind of ending was season 4, but now it's season 5. That's the place where you got to make it a little bit happier, a little bit more light-hearted and optimistic, but maybe that's just me. But regardless, that brings us to a bit of a conundrum. What the hell is going to happen with Max next season? What's her story arc going to end up looking like? How does she end up moving forward as a character? Now, from what I've gathered from Duffer Brothers interviews, apparently the majority of her bones are broken and she's blind as well as being brain dead. So paralysis, blindness, brain dead, it's not a great prognosis. It's pretty depressing. I mean, this is a kid who loved skateboarding and being outdoors, and now it's looking like she's going to be bedridden for the rest of her life. And so, I'm kind of in two minds about the future of the character. On one hand, I think if you completely heal her and bring back her eyesight or heal her other physical injuries completely, it does have the potential to show that there are no real stakes in the story. That if you're one of the core main characters, you are always going to be safe and nothing bad's actually going to happen to you. And if something does happen, like getting blinded, crippled, dying, well, don't worry, because it can be reversed and you'll eventually be A-OK. -okay. And I'm not sure that'd be a very satisfying way to wrap up the story. Plus, having a character that's either blind or unable to walk 
would be a very interesting story point. But then on the other hand, it could also be a bit of a narrative hindrance. She'd be very much turned into a bystander, unable to interact with the narrative. The story's probably not going to be set in her hospital room. Sure, they're going to be there at times, but the characters move around, and it would be a bit dull to have her character bedridden and unable to be involved with the larger story. Plus, like I said, based on the writing decisions surrounding the kids, I don't see the creators really having the desire to keep up with that sort of bleak ending for a top-level main character. Like, Hopper didn't get killed at the end of Season 3, so I don't think she's going to be permanently blinded or paralysed. Well, maybe she will be one of the two, but I think one of them's going to be stripped away. I don't know whether it's going to be a good idea or not, but it feels like the most likely scenario going forward. If they had more than one season left to go, I'd say she'd stay disabled. But I don't see it being likely with only one season left to explore the character. There's just not enough time to have a satisfying arc surrounding that. So, she'll probably recover. But how will this occur? Well, realistically, there's only one character that could feasibly help her in this regard. Al. And we've seen her rip holes in space and time and unlock pathways to a secret dark dimension. We've seen her snap necks, disintegrate monsters, and do all manner of crazy shit. Hell, at the end of this season, we even saw her make her way into Max's brain and have a psychic battle with Vecna, before restarting Max's heart remotely all the way from a surfer boy's pizza in Nevada. Meanwhile, her evil counterpart Henry, slash one, slash Vecna, has survived getting roasted by weird lightning in the Upside Down, wandered through that world for years, discovered some magical particles which allowed him to tap into the world's hive mind and enslave its creatures, and can do all manner of crazy evil shit. Is it so out of the realm of possibility for people with their powers to be able to reverse the majority of a person's physical injuries? I honestly don't think so. And realistically, this is where I see it going. But before I leave you, I also have some supreme tinfoil hat evidence for my theory that Al is going to fix Max. Don't take it too seriously. It's stupid and it's tinfoil. And it's a big time stretch. But still. Okay, so Max and Al bond during Season 3 over Wonder Woman, right? So there's an underlying association between their friendship and that character. There's an arc in the comics where Diana gets blinded. And eventually, her sight is restored by the goddess Athena using her magical powers. Eh? Eh, you feeling me? I mean, from a certain point of view, I'd say Vecna is basically the dark god of the Upside Down. So in that respect, Al is kind of like a goddess too. She opposes him. So, therefore, is she the goddess that's going to restore Max's sight? Eh? Eh? Plus, what's the running theme of the party? Friends don't lie. Wonder Woman uses the lasso of truth. And hey, when Diana gets her sight back, it's supercharged with Athena's power. So maybe Al restores her sight, and now she can, I don't know, see things like the Upside Down. Like how Will used to see things when he was connected to the hive mind. I don't know, it sounds kind of janky and a little bit stupid, but it's tin foil. It doesn't need to make too much sense. So there. But anyway, that's really the end of the video. And I would like to say that these are just my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What do you think Max's arc's going to be in Season 5? Do you think she'll stay as is, or do you think she'll get some special healing from Al? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.